Hello and welcome to this le lecture on implementing list decoders for polar codes. Okay. Uh, so, I, I gave a couple of, uh, I, I, we did one lecture earlier on how to do list decoding. I described the whole philosophy from a high level, the path, path metrics and uh, decision metric and adding uh, the decision metric to the path metric and comparing path metrics and having a list size of 4, picking the least path metrics. All of that uh, uh, we described earlier. And I also described to you the block diagram of how a list decoder works and how the CRC insertion is important. Okay, so the list decoder is, put, is going to put out a list of code words. From that, how do you pick the code word that is a valid code word? You use a CRC check. Okay, uh, so in this uh, lecture, we will see how to implement that. We will take our existing uh, successive cancellation decoder and add the list decoding components. You will see it is uh, sort of ok, it is easy to do in MATLAB at least. Uh, you simply instead of having one decoder, you will have multiple decoders and once again we will not be doing this efficiently at all. We will just do a decoder to get it to work and we will think about adding efficiency and other things uh, maybe later on and in fact, I will leave it to you as, uh, as your work how to improve the efficiency in these decoders. Okay? For now, uh, let us just look at how the implementation goes. Uh, so, the first step uh, like I mentioned is to add CRC. Okay? Without CRC, the list decoding is not going to work, it does not make uh, sense at all. So, you saw in the LDPC code also actually in the standard there is a CRC, but we never implemented it, it is not needed in the LDPC code. Uh, but in this case, uh, CRC is critical for the list decode. Okay? So, here is uh, where what I have what done with the CRC. So, you notice uh, quite a few things have changed. I have made uh, A as the number of actual message bits and CRCL is the number of CRC bits okay? and K which is the message uh, dimension of the code is A plus CRCL. So, 500 plus 11 is 511 okay? and uh, for the CRC comes with a polynomial and the polynomial is uh, clearly defined in the standard this is that is the polynomial for you. Okay? So, if you write it out as a polynomial, okay? so the CRC for length equals 11, the polynomial uh, as defined in the standard it is uh, right there, okay, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, this is uh, uh, x power 11 plus x power 10 plus x power 9, uh, 8, 7, 6, x power 5, okay. The polynomial is x power 11 plus x power 10 plus x power 9 plus x power 5 plus 1, okay. So, this is the polynomial, okay. And uh, the way in which you do CRC, we are not going to describe the ideas of CRC and all that in this class, uh, but we, we will see how to implement it in MATLAB at least. So, this is the CRC polynomial, you need this. So, if you choose to do a CRC of a different length, let us say length 16 or something, then okay. So, if you choose to do a polynomial a CRC of a longer length, say 16 or 24, these are also possible, then you have to change your uh, CRC polynomial, okay. you change it to something else. Alright, so now uh, the next thing I put, so you see the quantization all of that is fine. Uh, next thing I have is list size, okay. So, I am picking that as 4, uh, you might want to have 8 maybe later on if you want more uh, performance, but 4 is uh, four is a good enough number and seems like a reasonable number. And notice here rate becomes A by N, okay, it is not K by N anymore, it is A by N. The reason is CRC bits are actually parity bits, they are not message bits and we are using those parity bits in the decoding in the list decoder. So the rate is A by N and that is uh, something important as well. Okay? So, you should capture that as well. Okay. So, once you do that, other things do not change too much except, uh, so let us focus on the CRC computation. Okay? So, you have the message that gets generated. Remember, I am generating only A messages now, not K. Okay? And then I do a division. You have to divide uh, one polynomial by another. So, what I am doing here is uh, setting up those polynomials okay? and I am using this function GFD convolve. Uh, which is available uh, in MATLAB, it is also available in Octave. So, if through some toolboxes, so you can this, this command will work, work. So, it will divide the first polynomial in binary by this other polynomial. Uh, the reason why we do this flipping, okay, so you saw the flipping even in the CRC G, uh, G definition if you saw it earlier. So, even here I flipped. Uh, the reason is this G of T convolve function uses uh, values in increasing powers. So, you have to do this flipping. Uh, to make sure that uh, the increasing powers of the polynomial get correctly reflected. Uh, the, the zeros I put here is the reminder. Okay? The reminder will come and occupy the zero positions 
and uh, this is just the message flipped so that the polynomial becomes the correct degree and then you have that down here okay so you find the reminder the quotient is actually not very relevant to us the reminder is what matters and the reminder gets added to the uh, crc part okay so the message comes as it is and then you will uh, uh, take the reminder and uh, zero and i've done uh, flip lr as well okay so that's okay so that's so that the reminder which is again in increasing powers becomes in decreasing powers okay so this is how it is done okay so this is described in the standard as well and the only thing to note is i use this df gfd convolve uh, to do the division of polynomials okay so, so polynomial division is not very difficult to write in case uh, you don't find it it's easy to write polynomial division uh, but nevertheless uh, this is we use this function to make a job easier okay so you have message and then you have message plus crc this will be k bits okay so this will be uh, this you can see i have made it equal to crc l okay the length i have added enough zeros to make sure that the overall length is crc l and this will be k bits okay so maybe i should write that down and then after that i just encode crc so message crc is what gets assigned as the u value okay so there's something to take note of and then uh, after there is no major change as far as the encoding is concerned and modulation and quantization uh, then comes the big change in the sc decoders okay so you need nl decoders right so whatever how many ever uh, list size you want that many decoders you need okay so these llr values okay so previously i think i had it as capital l i have now changed it as llr it's just a change in the notation these llr values will not just be n plus 1 comma n so if you go look at the sc decoder this is just the successive cancellation decoder if you look at the successive cancellation decoder this l was just n plus 1 comma n what have i done in the list decoder so if you notice this first tab i have is the sc decoder the last tab that i have is the sc list decoder in the list decoder this llr values there is three dimensions in the array okay the first nl gets added nl comma n plus 1 comma n for every uh, decoder i need a new array a different array okay okay so we need nl uh, uh, of these u caps also okay and then i need the path metric path metric i'm calling as pml so this path metric wasn't there before we need it now uh, if you notice i'm initializing the path metrics there are nl of them and all of them i'm initializing to infinity okay and then i'm setting the first alone to zero okay so which means initially only one decoder is active so if the path metric is infinity it means uh, it's not going to be considered by anything okay so infinity is just a value i use in matlab you can use some other value if you don't like it okay so that's the path metric for you okay so this node state vector is actually common to all the decoders okay so you don't need to maintain multiple values for node state vector it's the same thing because all the decoders traverse at the same time okay they are synchronized in that fashion okay so initialization at the root now previously we did only for uh, one uh, one decoder so the only one value got initialized now we have to repeat it for nl times okay so all the beliefs of all the decoders are initialized okay and then after that the decoder actually proceeds in the same way so the node and the depth and moving uh, left down and then going back up and then going right doing the f operation doing the g operation doing the u operation to go up all of them are the same okay except that you have to repeat it for all the decoders okay so let me start with the uh, l operation okay right it's doing the step l and going to the left child uh, so if you notice nothing much has changed except that this command this ln uh, was not using the squeeze before but now i'm doing the squeeze so if you look at it llr of colon which means i take the values from all the decoders not just the one decoder all the nl decoders and then i squeeze out that uh, the dimension the depth plus 1 is just a single dimension so i squeeze it out so i get a two dimensional array this ln will be a two dimensional array okay and then i split it into a and b and then everything else is the same and then i assign the f value back into the uh, original array okay so that's all so instead of doing it for one decoder the same operation i repeat for nl decoders at the same time okay same thing with step r also nothing changes in step r uh, same way we squeeze and you know we get from the three dimension array we go to a two dimensional array okay to get all the values for a particular depth then you find a b same thing with u cap n nothing changes except that you're doing the same operations for four decoders okay and same thing with step u also okay the step u that goes to parent nothing much changes you do it for all four decoders okay the only significant change is in the decision okay when depth is n 
okay when it is a leaf you need to make decisions and there the list decoder has a lot of change every time you make a decision you have to update the path metric you will get eight path metrics you have to choose the best four out of the eight path metrics and throw away and do some rearrangement in the decoders okay so that requires uh, some effort okay and this there is a change there and let me uh, talk about it first first is the decision metric okay this is the decision metric for the four decoders and first you check if it is frozen if it is frozen things are easy okay if it's frozen there is no need to look at both decisions if you remember from the lecture if the bit is frozen you simply decide everything is one everything is zero but you update the path metric this is important okay path metric is updated if the path metric is negative the absolute value gets added okay this piece of code does that for you okay absolute value dot into dm less than zero so if the if the, actually the dm is negative it will get uh, the absolute value will get added to the path metric okay and then after that in case it's not frozen you have to make decisions okay i'm first deciding according to the decision metric this dec is a decision as per the decision metric okay and uh, now what i do is in pm2 not only do i consider the decision metric this is i also consider the opposite decision which will make the the path metric increase by absolute value of dm okay so that's what i put here in pm2 first nl are as per dm next nl are opposite of decision metric okay so the decision you made in the first nl positions is according to the decision metric the next nl uh, the in the eight decoders you are considering the first four decoders the decisions you made were as per the decision metric in the next four it is opposite to that okay so there are multiple ways to do it i am doing it in this fashion okay and then i do these adjustments okay so find out uh, those that survive so this is the important step this is the sorting step okay so this uses min k what is min k if you have an array min k will give you the least four elements from the array okay so remember this uh, pm is all positive value so you don't need to take absolute value anymore so this min k will give you the least k values from an array so this pm2 has two times nl uh, length okay two, two times nl if nl is 4 it has length 8 out of which i will take the least 4 okay so you get the new pml okay which is the least 4 and also the positions of the new pml is in pos okay which are the least 4 you had eight values some of them could be in 1 to 4 some of them could be in 5 to 5 to 8 also so which came into the least 4 that is captured in pos okay if so i need to know which of the decisions are that survive okay the decisions that survive are in pos okay which survive and they are opposite of dm that i need to know okay and then i need to subtract this nl to get uh, the actual indices okay and then permute the decisions as per that and then invert the decisions when the decision is opposite of dm so these are just routine operations uh, we will run it once and i'll show you uh, how this is working okay and then i rearrange my decoder states okay so basically i delete the decoders that are not valid and keep the decoders that are valid and then assign this to decision okay so this uh, this little piece of code uh, actually implements the uh, the list stage okay so expanding the list from 4 to 8 and then contracting it again back to 4 okay so you go to 8 you consider both decisions when the bit is not frozen arrange the path metrics pick the best four of the path metric okay and then do the adjustments so the adjustments are a little bit complicated i will let you look at the code and think about it the code is there with you if you run it once or twice uh, you will see how the code works and uh, you will understand what i mean okay so it's a little bit uh, involved i don't want to go into great detail on the code okay but this part implements uh, exactly that okay so if you have a version of matlab or octave i urge i'll let you run it for a while with some small length maybe and then look at the look at what this piece of code is doing and then you will learn a little bit more about how this is doing and clearly this is not the only way to do it there are multiple ways to implement this if you have a better way you're welcome to implement this as well okay so this is the implementation of the list decoder uh, please look at this part of the code and try to see if, uh, if this is correct or if I made any mistakes or if you think you can uh, improve this in a nice way. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the implementation of the list decoder. Okay. So now uh, what, what I want to do is maybe, maybe run this once. I will run it once. Uh, now when you run it, it's uh, good to stop at a particular place. Now MATLAB's decoder, uh, debugger allows uh, all these kind of nice and simple conditions. Uh, to make you stop somewhere so I'll stop 
at some point let us say 250. So, at the 250th node I want to stop. So, I will set a conditional breakpoint there and then I will run it. Okay. How many blocks I am running? I think it is enough if I run one block. Okay. Let me save and run. Okay. A uh, brief warning about min k. So, I believe uh, MATLAB introduced this in 2018 onwards. So, in case you have an older version, you have to write your own uh, min k. So, min k is not very hard to write. Here is a simple version uh, min k of x comma k is simply sort it and take the first k. Okay. So, this is actually not very efficient. You, there is an algorithm which uh, will find the minimum k without sorting the whole list. Uh, but anyway, so for quick and dirty implementation, this is good. Okay. Uh, I have set my uh, uh, breakpoint here and now I am going to run this. So, so we can implement our own version of min k. You, you need to return the minimum k elements and where they are also. Okay. So, that requires a little bit of coding and you can do that with sort. Uh, sort uh, sorts it in ascending order. You pick the first k and return it and pick the first k positions and return it. Okay. So, this will uh, should work and this is your own min k and you can use MATLAB's min k as well. Uh, it is probably definitely more efficient. If you have uh, 2018b or later, I think that will work. Okay, so let's run this. Uh, run this. So it has worked, and it has gone up to node of uh, node will be 250, like I said. Uh, so let's look at uh, so what happens at this point. So it's interesting to look at the path metrics. I'm sorry, PML I think was the path metric. 118, 149, 149, 149. This is the path metric at this point. Okay. And uh, you find the decision matrix and see if it is frozen, it is not frozen. Okay. So, you went into the decision. Okay. So, let us look at what the decision metric was 31 minus 6, 31, 0. Okay. So, that is the decision metric at this point. Okay. You look at the decisions as per the decision metric, you will see this will be 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay. And then, uh, then you look at the PM2. Okay, so notice what PM2 is. Okay, it is uh, the path metric if you decide as per the decision metric, and the path metrics if you decide opposite to the decision metric. Okay, so you add the uh, the DM uh, absolute value. Okay, and then you sort it. Okay, your min k. Okay, so if you do the min k, you get the new PML, which is uh, you see that 149. Uh, is the one that is one out. There's nothing, no major churn, churn that has happened here, and pause is just one, two, three, four. Uh, so everything is easy. Uh, so maybe what, uh, and you can see how this is done. So this is not very instructive. So maybe I'll I'll uh, I'll set up a breakpoint here, and then continue to get to the next one. So we see uh, PM, PML. It is the same thing, but hopefully the decision metric is a little bit more interesting. Let us see if the pause became a bit more interesting. Now it is again 1, 2, 3, 4. So, if it is just 1, 2, 3, 4, then you are not doing a lot of sorting and moving around. It is not uh, uh, very nice. So, maybe I will continue for a few more things and then uh, step in and see. Okay, I think maybe we are in luck. Okay. So, let us look at okay. So, here is an interesting situation where POS became 1, 2, 5, 3. So, your PML uh, and PM2 look at. So, this was the PM2 1, 1, 188, 219, 223, all these things. So, when you sorted, you got 188 first and then 219, another 219, uh, and then uh, 223. So, if you look at the positions. Uh, 5 got added. So, you got 1, 2, 3, but 5 got added. So, you made a decision opposite to the decision metric. So, when you do that, you have to find the places where this POS 1 happened. So, POS 1 is uh, will, will indicate to you uh, the positions where decisions opposite to the DM was done. This was in the third position. So, you get 0, 0, 1, 0. And those alone, you have to subtract NL, so that you get back POS as remaining one. So, what happens here is the first decoder had both decisions surviving. Okay. First decoder's decision as per its decision metric and against its decision metric 
also survived okay and then two and three are had decisions as per their decision matrix surviving okay and then you did that and then uh, see remember decision was according to the decision matrix so now i have to uh, i have to permute it as well because some of the the fourth decoder for instance is not uh, not even there so that needs to go and then i have to flip the pos one okay after that you just continue as it is okay so that was the that was one example to show you how this uh, decision happens and then what do you do after everything is done is you have to check your crc so let me just run to cursor here i've come here all my decoding is complete i'm looking at the uh, candidates okay so i'm taking at taking all the candidates you will have nl candidates all of them will be in message cap l okay and then you have to see which candidate is to be outputted you go through all the candidates okay and then you do the division again to check which crc is satisfied or not so let's go through this so i'm going and checking if the crc is satisfied or not if r1 is zero crc is satisfied and it passes yes it passes so you're done okay so it might happen that this, uh, this r1 is not zero also but in, in most cases the crc will pass okay and you get through and you get the decoder okay so hopefully that uh, showed you how the decoder works and maybe uh, you can you can for instance uh, if you're curious to see what the c out is you can print c out uh, i'm sorry print doesn't work here. so you can display c out and then run the decoder for a little while and you'll see whether or not other decisions are getting uh, getting done here so let me adjust the eb over and not to something like say 1 1.5 and then do 100 blocks okay and re remember i'm outputting the c out which candidate code word got ch chosen okay so if you run it so you see one comes quite often most of the time ah there was a two okay the second candidate got chosen there once in a while uh, we don't expect the, the we always expect the least uh, path metric candidate to win but once in a while you will get something uh, lower also okay so that can happen maybe you'll go to a lower snr maybe you'll see more of it okay so most of the time the best path metric wins okay once in a while you get the second path metric also winning okay very rarely okay here you got one more here you got one more here you got three okay so once in a while when the decoder happens the so second or third uh, uh, candidate code word passes the crc and the other thing doesn't pass okay so if you want to do uh, repeat the simulation that we had remember this is roughly rate half and we saw 2 db was the number uh, where uh, the ldpc code was giving you zero errors for 100 code words uh, let me stop the display of the c out this is not needed anymore okay so let's just see if uh, 2 db for 100 blo 100 code words for rate half for the polar code list decoder with four how does that perform does it give you zero or not it will give you something better than the uh, sc decoder at 2 db that gave about 12 errors out of 100 if i remember correctly this should give you something better let's see so it gives you zero okay so you see in these 100 code words the list decoder uh, decoder and gave you zero if you actually run uh, for uh, the sc decoder at 2 db which we did a little while ago 2 db with 100 blocks you will see this will give you some errors it won't give you zero it give you 14 errors out of 100 so you see there is an improvement in the list decoder okay so so we see that the list decoder really improves in performance by that little bit uh, to make it uh, comparable maybe with the other decoders uh, so in an ensuing lecture the final lecture possibly of this course uh, we will compare this uh, rate half length thousand code uh, between ldpc and polar and then uh, run simulations and com compute uh, i mean show you the simulation results and i'll show you how you can compare these three codes and decoders and uh, make a nice plot of ber versus eb over and not and make a fair comparison okay with that we'll conclude this course okay thank you very much mm -hmm.